Hi, this is Bobby Kimber, and welcome to Off the Cuffs. I'm excited today to have with me Mr. John Curry, the athletic director from Wake Forest University, the great Wake Forest University, located right here in our hometown of Winston-Salem. Ms. Curry, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you for taking time of your busy schedule to come and join us. I'm grateful that you're here today. Welcome. Thank you, Sheriff, and it's an honor to be here with you, and we appreciate the way you and uh, the Sheriff's Department serves our community. Well, you know, while I know you, uh, I met you this year. While I know you, a lot of people that are watching and listening, they have no idea who John Kerry is. You know, I did a little research myself, mm-hmm. uh, and we're very fortunate to have you here. But tell us, how did you get here? Who is John Kerry? Well, really, it starts, Sheriff, uh, in the fact that I came here as a freshman at Wake Forest in the fall of 1989. That's true. Uh, and of all places, I came from Chapel Hill. And I grew up in Chapel Hill as an unabashed Carolina fan and yeah. going to those games with my dad uh, as a kid, watching those players like James Worthy and Michael Jordan and Amos Lawrence and yeah. some of the great, great names of that era. But also remember a couple uh, great Wake Forest wins when I was a young kid uh, in Keenan Stadium and in Carmichael Auditorium. So in 1989... Um, in the fall, I started here as a freshman at Wake Forest. I graduated in 93. I got my first job. I started my first job on August 16, 1993. I was hired by Ron Wellman, yeah. who was our athletics director for 27 years. And I was one of his first hires. And as it turns out, uh, in uh, March the 4th of 2019, uh, President Hatch hired me to follow Ron as athletics director at Wake Forest. Wow. So tell me something. What's that like to, to have – come here, graduate, and be working here uh, at your alma mater? Well, it's a very special uh, opportunity. Uh, And first of all, I I think Winston-Salem is uh, the finest city in America to live in. I agree Uh, with you And I've I've been able to live. I know you went all over the country and all over the world in your career. uh, I've lived uh, in four different cities in my professional and adult adult life, and they've all been great for lots of different reasons. Uh, But this place is incredibly special. So after I graduated in 93, I was here for about six years in the 90s. I I left in August of 2000. I went to the University of Tennessee for nine years, which is a very nice place, Knoxville. Uh, And then I had eight years as athletics director in Manhattan, Kansas, the Little Apple, yeah, yeah. Uh, at Kansas State, uh, uh, one of the youngest uh, BCS ADs, so to speak. Uh, and Manhattan is a much smaller community. It's about 50,000 folks and is a wonderful college town. Uh, but coming here to Winston-Salem and seeing the transformation uh, in this city here in downtown and the Innovation Quarter uh, District and uh, the way this whole region has grown up, I think Sheriff, that uh, when I graduated from high school in 89, <laughs> and I know that's just a year or so around <laughs> you, maybe, maybe 10 or 12 years after you or 10 or 12 months after you, I'm not sure which, um, but I think there was only about five and a half million people in North Carolina, and now yeah. we've got, what, 11 million? We're yeah. top 10 uh, states in the country, uh, and right now in Winston-Salem, I think Winston-Salem, I, I see North Carolina, and especially the, the Piedmont of North Carolina as one big city. And I see Winston-Salem as the coolest neighborhood in the city. Oh, without question, without question. It's the coolest in the whole city, in the whole state, in my opinion, in the world. Um, Like you, I've lived in a lot of different places. But uh, Winston-Salem is a special place. So tell me something. What does an AD do? What does an athletic director do? You know, that's a very, uh, I know what it does, but a lot of people have no clue what you do or what encompasses that. Well, at Wake Forest, we have about 200 staff members and 400 student athletes. Wow. We have 18 sports. Uh, We've been very fortunate. We've won the national championship in a number of our sports at Wake Forest, Mm -hmm. and we have uh, highly competitive programs, and we're also elite from an academic performance standpoint among student athletes. Uh, As you know, Sheriff, um, uh, Wake Forest is uh, one of the 65 members of the so-called Power Five athletic conferences, and Mm -hmm. so that's a pretty special club to be in uh, as part of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Uh, But for me as an athletics director, um, when I first became an AD, I thought, probably like you probably thought coming into this job, I thought like communication was was probably 40 or 50 percent of the job. And what I realized pretty quickly is communication with all our different constituents, probably 80 percent of the job. So So true. A huge amount of time I spend uh, is on communicating with all our constituents. For us, it starts with our student athletes, but we're Mm -hmm. also thinking about our faculty and staff. And of course, Wake Forest has uh, alums all over the world. We had to stay in in touch with those folks. And then one of the unique things about Wake Forest and Winston-Salem is we have a number of great educational universities in the city of Winston-Salem. Um, and we want fans 
uh, of Wake Forest to be from from anybody. You don't have to go to Wake Forest to be a Wake Forest fan. We want to be uh, the ACC school for uh, Wake Forest, uh, for, for the city of Winston-Salem. So communicating with that, the, our, our local constituency as well is a big part of what we do. You know, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you said that you want fans from all parts of this, this city and all parts of this region, whether they're graduates mm -hmm. or whether they're students there. Because what's so important to me that I have seen a whole different transformation at the university is that being a part of the community. And you all are doing that, and I love that. I, I've met with uh, the president on, on a couple of occasions, and being a part of the community is a very powerful thing because, without question, you are the, the premier university in this in this area. You know, make no mistake about it. We, we recognize that uh, in terms of the academics uh, as well as the athletic programs. And so to whom much is given, much is required. You know, my father always talked about that. And so you are located right here in Winston-Salem, the university. So when you look as the athletic director, as you look at one of the leaders on campus and the staff that, that, that you've been afforded with, what are some of the ways that you see being a part of this community as the AD? Well, we talk about five main goals mm -hmm. in Wake Forest Athletics. You know, our vision is to be America's model intercollegiate athletics program. And people talk about where they do it the best, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the biggest right. or the loudest or the right. most expensive, but where do they do it the best? We want them to say Wake Forest, no matter what aspect of our program um, we, we may be talking about. So those five goals, we talk about a world-class student-athlete experience. Mm -hmm. that we're, That's where it starts for all of us. Uh, we, start, we talk about integrity and academics, compliance, finance, inclusion, safety. That's one of our words that, that we talk about. Yeah. Uh, we talk about uh, value to the university, to Winston-Salem, to the triad. Uh, we talk about winning championships because that's, that's important. That's we like to important. win. That's Gotta part of win. America. Yeah. Let's win. Um, and then we want to have the best fan experience in North Carolina. So going back to your question, when we talk about uh, goal number five, having the best uh, fan experience in the state of North Carolina – we can do that because Winston-Salem is such a wonderful city. It's so easy to get in and out of Winston-Salem. Yeah. And when we talk about being the best, having the best fan experience, uh, what I mean by that is even though we have great organizations and great schools in this, uh, in mm -hmm. this uh, state, um, and we got the Panthers and we got the Hurricanes That's and the true. Hornets, but, but I believe that if a family or a young person or an older couple or just a single person is looking to have a great fan experience, we can offer the best one in the state right here in Winston-Salem. We got the best roads in and out. We got the true. best sheriff's department. We got that's a great true. police that's department. True. <laughs> that's uh, true. We've got a progressive uh, city administration. We have wonderful facilities uh, at Wake Forest. Uh, you know, we play basketball in the Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial, Memorial Coliseum. The Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum is the only Power Five basketball coliseum named after an African-American. That's a fact. Part of the connectivity to our community and a, a great uh, a great American hero, uh, Lawrence Joel, who I actually read about when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, and then I came here and they named the the, uh, the basketball coliseum about him. So, but when you think about the impact on the community, if we have the best fan experience in North Carolina and we draw people into our community, then what do they do? On the way in, they stop and they buy gas, they spend the night in one of our hotels, they spend eat in money. our restaurants, uh, they spend money. That's an economic impact. Now. Sometimes people talk about college athletics with the idea that it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. And college athletics is not all about the money, Sheriff. If we were all about the money, we would have 53 football players instead of 120. And we wow. have 12 men's basketball players. And that's it. Um, so let me ask you a question. I've always wanted this when he's talking about football and, and athletics and about the money. So of those hundred or all of those scholarship players, how does that work? So we have, to, to, to the point, if, if college athletics was all about the money, we would uh -huh. have 53 football players and, and 12 men's basketball players. We wouldn't have 400 student athletes. Wow. And so at Wake Forest, for instance, those 400 athletes um, in football, uh, we have 85 full scholarship football players. Really? And then right now we have about 35 walk-ons. And wow. so those 35 walk-ons are paying full fare. It costs about $77,000 to go to Wake Forest. Um, and uh, then we have... Um, uh, scholarships and a number of other sports. And so in baseball, we have 11.7 scholarships uh, allocated to about 35 players total, so they have partial scholarships. Mm -hmm. Women's soccer, we have 15 scholarships. We usually have about 25 women on our women's soccer program. Wow. Uh, so the scholarships are, are spread around. So uh, to some extent, student-athletes uh, many times are, are paying part or all of their uh, educational expense. 
Wow, that's amazing. So, you know, this new COVID is, is taking over. How are you guys doing with COVID? What are some of the changes you've had to make with COVID, and, and how are you adjusting? Well, we have adjusted and adapted just like other uh, parts of society. Uh, we've had three principles uh, in the COVID era for Wake Forest Athletics. Principle number one was be as safe as possible. Mm-hmm. Principle number two is provide our student athletes some competition. So early on, Sheriff, in the springtime, in the summer, as we're planning for what a season might look like, uh, we knew that it was unrealistic to have the perfect season and have the perfect number of games and the perfect number of matches for different sports. Uh, Our goal was to provide some competition because our student athletes told us they wanted it. Um, And then the third goal is to sustain the enterprise. And so that's where you see us making decisions. Um, You know, it's not all about the money, but it does take money to run the operation and provide right. those opportunities for 400 student athletes. So uh, we've been very fortunate. I think I feel like our student athletes um, have provided a model behavior. Uh, we've had very low uh, COVID outbreaks uh, amongst our programs and very low at, the, at, at Wake Forest. I think one of the most unique things about the city of Winston-Salem is right now at Winston-Salem State with about 5,000 students and at Wake Forest with about 5,000 undergraduate students and eight or 9,000 total students at Wake Forest. Both universities, both with excellent leadership uh, from Chancellor Robinson at Winston-Salem State and from President Hatch at Wake Forest, both universities, unlike a lot of places we've read about, have really managed and had low uh, incidents of outbreak. And I think it's a it's testament to the leadership, but it's also a testament to the young people at so, both institutions. So, so are you guys still playing uh, football? We're playing football. We've played three games. Uh, we'll play again this week. Um, and uh, we, we believe we have 11 games scheduled, uh, wow. and we, we believe we've got a great chance to get them all in. Uh, we're playing soccer. Our men's soccer team is ranked number one in the country. We're playing women's soccer. Mm-hmm. We're playing field hockey. We're running track, um, and we're playing volleyball as well. So so who are you playing this week? Uh, this week, this uh, Saturday, we play University of Virginia at 4 o'clock, and on yeah. the 24th, we play Virginia Tech at 3.30. Wow. So what are some of the challenges being the AD? Right. So you – you came in 19, right? I came in 2019, correct. 2019. What are some of the challenges you've seen in some of the, the vision? Like, so, for example, you know, as, as the new AD, you've been here about a year now, right? Year and a half. Year and a half, right. So when you look out and see some of the, the challenges, what do you think uh, some of the challenges, some of the things you want to incorporate in – this new era that you're in as the AD at Wake Forest? So I'm really lucky. I'm the sixth athletics director in Wake Forest history. Ron wow. Wellman was AD 27 years. Dr. Gene Hooks, who's still with us and is a great I leader example, uh, Dr. Hooks was AD for 28 years. Wow. And just by comparison, um, when I became athletics director at Kansas State, I was the 15th athletics director in K-State history. And after eight years, I was the fourth longest tendered. So you wow. compare that to uh, the longevity and the stability that's been at Wake Forest. And that's one of the reasons Wake Forest has been able to transform itself. Um, and even though we're the smallest by, uh, by enrollment uh, in the Power Five, we win more than our fair share. And we certainly graduate and do the right things from an academic perspective. Um, so I think, Sheriff, one of the biggest challenges – Uh, in the college athletics scene is ensuring that the academic aspect continues to be the main priority. So not losing focus of the true essence of college athletics, which is to be tethered to the academic enterprise of college athletics. And certainly the commercial attention on college athletics has never been greater. Um, But lots of folks don't realize uh, the extraordinary benefits that student athletes realize. So let's say I'm a parent out there and I'm saying, you know what, I got a uh, Division One athlete because right? Wake is Division One, right? Division One. So that's another question I got for you. So how do they set up Division One, Two, and Three? What sets the stage for that? So is in, the number of students, number of money. The NCAA has about a thousand institutions okay. at Division One, Two, and Three levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are 120, 130 FBS, which is the football bowl subdivision. Uh, there are three hundred and fifty. Division one institutions, and the rest are Division two and Division three. So, what makes a school? So, you just said that one same state has about five thousand mm-hmm. students. You got about mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. What makes you a Division one and them a Division two? How do how do they set the this? the divisions? To to your division is determined 
um, by a comparative level of investment that you have into the program. So if you're a Division One program, you've made a commitment to, op- to operate a certain number of sports mm-hmm. and provide a minimum number of scholarships in, okay. in those sports. I got and it. And so, at, for instance, in football at Division One level, uh, we can provide 85 scholarships. At the FCS level, which would be um, like uh, Campbell, who we played a few weeks ago, uh-huh. uh, at the FCS level – uh, or North Carolina A and T, you can provide a maximum of sixty three scholarships. I believe, and I may be wrong, but I believe the Division two limit is thirty six football scholarships, which can be split up, and so you may have a half scholarship or right. a quarter scholarship or whatever. So that would be an example of the comparative level of investment. Uh, so you get out eighty some levels. football scholarships every 85. year. Eight total. We have eighty five, and any one year we can have a maximum of eighty five football players on full scholarship. Wow. So let's say I'm a, I'm a parent. I got a Division one. Uh, athlete that I'm considering sending to Wake Forest versus sending him to another uh, school, Division One school. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you have in place that's going to ensure a successful graduation rate? Mm-hmm. Well, what we would what we would point to at Wake Forest is that Wake Forest has the most unique. A combination of excellent opportunities in athletics and high-level academic opportunities. And so we would talk about, uh, I think Steve Forbes uh, talks about our new basketball, talks about the Triple Crown. Yeah. You could be a top 30 academic university, you know, currently ranked 28th in the U.S. News and World Report uh, deal. Uh, you can be in the premier athletics conference in the country, uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference, and um, you can have these incredible facilities that we have at Wake Forest. And so if you walk into the Sutton Sports Performance Center or the Shaw Basketball Complex or David Couch Ballpark, you see that Wake Forest has a, a commitment at the highest level of success in athletics. But unlike some places, Wake Forest also has the Farrell Business School or our incredible faculty and our campus and all those kinds of things that would give you the opportunity to have a, um, a top 30 uh uh, United States uh, higher education diploma. So, you know, I'm, uh, in, in full transparency, one of the things that that uh, made me, or your stock went up in my world, right, not that it matters. So I was talking to some of your staff, uh, uh, Dwight and a few other guys up there, and they speak so highly of you. And they spoke highly of you before I ever met you. And when I met you at the breakfast that day down at the convention center, Later on, you and I were having a conversation, and then that's when I said, wow, he really gets it. When you talked about the diversity and talking with your, your, your athletes up there, having someone that could talk to them that was relatable. And I, that meant a lot to me because a lot of times as an athletic director who sits high, who may not even understand the plight or the struggle or even from whence the athletes come from and, and, and their day-to-day struggles that they have, you got it, and um, in talking, I, I was grateful that you acknowledged that. And so I, I wanted to applaud you and thank you for that publicly because in athletics, especially at, at, at the level that we're talking about, there's so many times that piece is missing. You know, we rush them in, perform, they're done, and we move on. And for you to say that we're graduating athletes, that's impressive. We're concerned about them. That's impressive. And we want to make sure that they're safe. We want to make sure they're having a good experience. We want to make sure that they're talking with people outside of the university that can give them a perspective of what it's like or what's going on. That says a lot about you and the university, and I, I wanted to thank you for that. I don't know if I got a chance to when we were on the uh, Zoom call, but I wanted to thank you for that because so many times um, – have traveled in this country and talking to people, sometimes they miss that, that that small point that connects us, that there's nothing wrong with that. But when you get it, that's where the magic takes place at. Well, one of the most special things about Winston-Salem to me is the diversity of the community. And, yeah. and, and candidly, I missed that when I was away for, for 19 years yeah. in, in, in Knoxville and in Manhattan, which are great places. Right. And, you know, I miss the, the, the Greek heritage that under, right. p- underpins the restaurant community oh, yeah. uh, uh, here in, in uh, Winston-Salem. Um, I miss lots of different things about Winston-Salem. But one of the unique opportunities, I think, about Wake Forest Athletics is that um, our, our facilities aren't right in the middle of our campus. And so they're, they're accessible to everybody. 
It's and, true. And, and that really, sh- when we talk about Wake Forest Athletics, Wake Forest Athletics, our hospitality should reflect what the hospitality should be about at Wake Forest. And, you know, if we can be the, the, the opening of the door, so to speak, um, and also the connector of our community, even when we have students that come to Wake Forest that come from far away uh, to get to know our community better uh, through athletics, uh, that can be really, um, really powerful. When you think about um, Wake Forest uh, and our, our motto of pro humanitate, and you think about uh, Dr. Larry Hopkins, for instance, you know, one of the first uh, truly great black athletes at Wake Forest who goes on to be, um, you know, an obstetrician, uh, OBGYN in this community has transformed um, health care for African-American women in the city of Winston-Salem. And to know that, that he was also at one point a pretty good tailback for Wake Forest, mm-hmm. you know, that, that to me captures the essence of what college athletics can be about, which is preparing leaders to serve their communities. And, you know, Dr. Hopkins, who's uh, right now has had a little health setback, but is recovering and has provided transformative leadership. And um, we ought to be thinking as we're recruiting student athletes, who, who can be the next Larry Hopkins yeah. and serve this community? So, you know, as a little boy growing up in Winston-Salem, um, we used to walk from 25th Street and we would pass what uh, Ernest Shorefield, mm-hmm. uh, who was a sheriff in the ballpark. <clears throat> and we would walk down University and we would cut through the little path right down there below, below uh, was that Bob Neal Pontiac right mm-hmm. there. And we would walk over to the gym. I think Skip Brown might have been playing that right. time then. And right there's a gym right there near the field house, I think where your office is. Mm-hmm. And we would sneak in there because, you know, the gym would be open. Right. Yeah, and we would just sneak in there and play basketball and hope to see some of the athletes that were playing at Wake Mm -hmm. come through there and sit and talk with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember Skip when he used to come through there, and uh, it was just amazing. And I said that to say this is that it means so much to the public that when you bring – sometimes what's happening they're off into the communities right. or you allow the community to come in and see and meet mm-hmm. the athletes mm-hmm. and I want you to know that I hope that you continue doing that because there's so many kids that look forward to you know I want to go to Wake I want to mm-hmm. play at Wake I want to talk to see what it's like because mm-hmm. a lot of times people don't know what they don't know they can't they don't they don't inspire what they don't what they have not seen mm-hmm. and so one of the things that that I applaud you for was that last year uh, some of your staff were allowing us to bring kids on mm-hmm. campus allowing us mm-hmm. to come to some of your football and basketball games and I look back at my experience growing up you know that didn't happen and I see mm-hmm. the transition has mm-hmm. changed and so um you guys are getting it right, and I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, that's an that's an ongoing commitment that yeah. Wake Forest has, uh, both from a pro humanitate uh, perspective and when we talk about serving the community. But you know, I, I look at college athletics and think about the fact that um, our system of of intertwining uh, elite athletics with higher education is unique. We're the only we're really the only country that does yeah. it like this in the world. Uh, but one of the things that it does is it opens up the eyes of people who might not have thought about college or really um, known what it was, but because of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons or the NC State Wolf Pack or the Winston Salem State Rams, that becomes part of their consciousness and becomes something that they can aspire uh, to go do. So I got two tough questions for you. Fire away. One is, what do you think about paying athletes You know, while they're in school? Because they generate a lot of funds for the school. What do you think about that? So, how much you want to pay them? I don't know. Let's say we pay them a hundred thousand. That's an easy number, right? Okay. Six well, figures. that would be a pay cut for f- football players at Wake Forest, because when you're looking it, at a seventy-seven thousand dollar tuition payment, yeah. uh, and you're looking at, um, and of course that's tax-free, sheriff. There's nothing coming out. Yeah. No W two on that deal. Yeah. And uh, you're looking at um, uh, uh, services like strength and conditioning. Um, it's free. Medical care. It's free. Um, All that comes in the seventy-seven thousand, include, including on, in addition to the seventy-seven thousand dollars, including you know you got a trainer. So I'll give you an example. My son was away at college and he got sick one night, and he had to go to uh, the emergency room, and he had to go to the emergency room by himself because it's COVID, right? Can't right. nobody can go in there. One of his buddies walked him down, then he walked into the emergency room, uh, and then after he got done with the emergency room, he walked home by himself, right? So for a college student athlete at Wake Forest, 
Um, if we have somebody that's got to go to the emergency room, one of our trainers, like Ada Lucas, is taking that student to the tra- to the to the emergency room. Uh, our team doctors calling ahead to make sure that the emergency room is ready for them, and then then somebody's taking them back to their dorm room, and then Making our sense. nutritionist or our registered dietitian is bringing a big sack of food and Pedialyte and all this kind of stuff. And then the next morning, the the highest paid person at the university, the football coach, is calling to find out and make sure that student's doing well. And so you think about that comparative example versus a regular student, um, the college student athlete experience is pretty special. See, that's at Wake Forest. Now, I could tell you some stories at other universities where all that wouldn't take place. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. You, I don't you'd know. be on your own with an Uber. I don't know. The Uber would come get you. The Uber would be well, waiting on you. I can't speak for everybody yeah, else, but, but I, I can speak I'm, for I'm our sure, deal. I'm sure. So I'm take, sure that's we, how they do it. When someone brings their child to us, uh, we're pretty proud of, of the, you know, there's a responsibility on the student's part. Uh, I'm sure that's right how they do it at Wake. Trust me. But, I wouldn't expect anything but, less. Uh, but we're, we're we're making sure it's a first class. It's first class. I like that. So, in other words, you're not in favor of paying athletes. Well, well, here's what I am in favor for, and that I've and that I've worked for during my my career. I've worked for continuing to expand the value of the student of the, of the scholarship, I like and, that. and the in the student athlete experience. And so, if you look at where we are right now versus yeah. where we were in 1993 when I started, in terms of the medical safety stuff, right? Uh, you know, we weren't testing for sickle cell that back then. We weren't doing EKGs. We weren't doing all that, and we're doing all that stuff now. Uh, we weren't providing unlimited nutrition, which is what we are now. That was an enhancement uh, three or four years ago. Probably spending a million dollars a year on that now. Wow. Uh, fi- providing a full cost of attendance. Uh, you know, if a student athlete at Wake Forest is living off campus, um, they're they're getting a check for about twenty two hundred dollars a month, in addition to having their scholarship paid for and their in their uh, wow. And so why they getting a check for twenty two hundred to live off room and board and cost of attendance? Attendance. What do you mean attendance? Cost of attendance is the difference between what the tuition is and what it actually costs to go to school someplace. So if I was an athlete, right, so let's say I got an athlete that's coming there, do they have an option to live off campus? Uh, After their junior year, if they're in the academic standard. So they have to be a senior, right? Uh, they, have senior. Their, they have to be in their fourth year. So if we, have, if we have a student athlete who's come and redshirted for a year, yeah. then maybe their last two years they're living off campus. And you pick the tab up? Mm-hmm. Pretty good deal, isn't it? You could live about anywhere at twenty two hundred dollars a month in Winston. Yeah, you might have to pay for a little food with that, but you got a pretty good deal. That's one of the great things about Winston Salem. This is a economical city. Everything's close. Wow, that's good stuff. I, that's pretty I, good stuff. I, yeah, I didn't know pretty that. So, so when you have this like myth about student athletes going hungry at night and all that kind of stuff, that's just not the case. At a, at a Power 5 school like Wake Forest. Oh, anymore. I can assure you that a Power yeah. 5 now, school. Now, there's always... Now you, you put that caveat in there, at a Power 5 school. Well, but the the, the question would be, you know, at, at schools, you know, even at, at Wake Forest um, and many Power 5 schools, um, the athletics program is not fully self-sufficient financially. I mean, yeah, there's you know, general funds that go into it. And that would be the case at most universities where the majority of the athletics budget would be funded out of the general fund. So, you know, I, I have traveled around to a lot of different programs, football programs, athletic programs, and seen a lot of different things, right? All programs are not created equal. They're not. Um, you are truly at the top of the food chain. And so um, I would applaud any student that could go there. That I mean, that that is truly, you have reached the... Uh, where the rubber uh, meets the road. You are truly in a whole nother league there. And I say that because um, when I go to a lot of different programs, what you said about some of the students not having the same luxury, Mm -hmm. they don't. And so I applaud you for being able to provide that for the students. So my second question is this. So let's say I got a, a, a student that is in his junior year, awesome athlete, right? He has to make a decision. Do we enter the draft or do we stay another year? What should he do? It's really up to his personal situation. And in our case, uh, we've had a lot of students return to Wake Forest for their for their final year of eligibility. Not every time. Uh, we are able to, depending on their draft slots, we're yeah. able to provide some projected draft slots. We're able to provide some insurance protection uh, to help them make that decision. What does that mean? Because a lot of people, what is insurance protection? So, so uh, get there's, injured? there's disability insurance. If, if a student athlete is, is injured and is never able to play again and therefore they can't get drafted and can't go to the, the NFL or NBA or whatever, uh, provide some protection. And there's loss of value insurance, which uh, is is – 
more expensive and is not offered in very many cases. But ultimately, Sheriff, it's really up to the young persons. It's wow. up to them and their family. What we want to make sure is that they get the best possible information that they can get. Um, and then I, I personally, um, I, I want the student athlete to make the decision that they feel is best. Now, we can make arguments uh, and we can make point out evidence of these are why the reasons you might want to come back and these are some reasons you might want to go ahead and and go into the draft and if a student chooses to do that um, I'm fully supportive of them and at Wake Forest we have that happen in multiple sports we have wow. it happen in football we have it happen in uh, baseball we've soccer. had it happen in golf we've had it happen in soccer we had uh, a women's soccer uh, player this in in August who decided to go ahead and sign a professional contract in Germany and not come back because of COVID and um, and she's finishing up her classes online, and she'll graduate with her degree uh, in December. So I really think it depends on the student. Um, you know, sometimes people ask about the effect of that on yeah. on um, on fans and on the sport. You know, people will ask about one and done in the NBA and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know, if a student has no interest in coming to college, or if a young person has no interest in coming to college, um, then I, I I don't feel like they should have to go to college if they want to go on and play pro somewhere or go straight into the minor leagues in baseball one and done um, huh? go, go do it um but for those students who want to tether their education and use and utilize uh, and i tell student athletes the other way around you exploit the system you know right. you, you come to college at wake forest or at k-state when i was at k-state you come and, and you exploit everything you can out of that relationship and that means athletically that means academically and that means socially in terms of the people and the relationships you develop so as we work in this community one of our goals uh, sheriff is that we want every single wake forest student athlete by the time they finish at mm-hmm. Wake Forest. We want every st- student athlete 100 percent to have completed some kind of internship while they are in school at Wake Forest. Wow. Uh, an internship in, in, a, in a... It's athletes as well? Student athletes. Student That's a- what I'm talking about. I'm just yeah, talking about student, student athlete athlete. population. I want every single one of them. Because sometimes one of the challenges in athletics, especially at a high level, again, whether it's soccer, baseball, football, um, the students, uh, student athletes, because their sports has become all year-round, almost right. all-encompassing. A lot of times we have student athletes who've literally never worked a job. Now, they've been very diligent about their preparation for their sport and lifting weights and running and right. travel baseball or golf or whatever it is or, or football seven-on-seven clinics now during the summertime. But they've because they've been all-encompassing, they've never really had any kind of job experience. And so it's, it's on us to create the opportunity and a framework that enables students to go work on finding something that they may like to do. You know, as I say to students uh, and student athletes, you know, even if you go do an internship and you decided, man, I really didn't like that particular internship. I didn't like that career. You've accomplished something because you've crossed something on the list and now you can go look at something else. And I think that career discovery is one of our real obligations and it's one of the real opportunities to differentiate ourselves at Wake Forest because we have this incredibly uh, uh, progressive and, and, and diverse community where there are different kinds of uh, right. internship opportunities. So when are you going to open the stands back up, let the people back in? Uh, that is up to the Department of Health and Human Services. And so how many are you letting in now? So right now we're at 7%, which is in line with the governor and the DHHS gu- guidance, which is about 2,200 for us uh, at Truist Field. Okay. So you're going to have 2,200, which is the max you're letting in uh, Saturday? That's the max we can have right now. So we'll have uh, up to 750 Wake Forest students. Right. And then we'll have about 500 player families and coaches' families, and then uh, six or 700 uh, uh, season ticket holders and Deacon Club members. Wow, wow. A lot goes on behind the scene. So I got this last question for you, right? I know you're going to say that. I already got the answer for you. If you could be at any university in the country <laughs> – <laughs> the athletic director at any university in the country. Yeah. Right now, you had a magic wand. You could be at UCLA. You could be at Chapel Hill. You could be at Notre Dame. You could be at Michigan. Where would you want to be at? You know the answer to the question, <laughs> Sheriff. I'd want to be right, and I chose to be right here at Wake Forest and in, in, in Winston-Salem. Yeah. You know, this is my 11th. 11th year as a BCA or Power 5 AD. Yeah. Um, and I look at Wake Forest and what we're doing um, and and what we're doing in the city of Winston-Salem and the way Winston-Salem is continuing to develop the right way around science and around education and around inclusive inclusiveness. Uh, I can't think of a better place to be. And we're, we got mountains that we're going to climb and summit that uh, – 
if you've already been to the top of the mountain and you're just trying to stay there, that's not nearly as much fun. That's true. What's fun is to build it. That's this true. place is building it, and there's nothing that we can't accomplish at Wake Forest that is necessarily easier to accomplish at other places. So I'm very proud and honored and humbled to be at Wake Forest. So I got one more for you. So there's some kid out there looking at you right now. That's whether he's at Winston-Salem State, whether he's at Wake Forest, no matter where he or she may be at. And they're saying, how do I get to be the next John Curry? What classes, what do I got to do to have this job? What do I got to do to be an AD somewhere? It won't be harder to make better grades than I made. That'll be easy. Um, but I believe that uh, when I started, mm-hmm. um, and Ron Wellman, who is a great mentor to me, was our athletics director in 1993. Me being Ron Wellman was the furthest thing from my imagination. Wow. So I believe young people today have much greater and better imaginations than I did. However, what I was focused on was the job I was doing at the time. And doing the best possible job as I could do as Deacon Club intern. And what I wanted to do more than anything, Sheriff, I wanted to be Deacon Club assistant director. Really? One step up. That's all. That's what I wanted to be. I didn't think about being AD. I thought about being a Deacon Club assistant. And how was I going to do that? I had to get that guy promoted. So I had to work as hard as I could to help Mike get promoted, which he did. And then guess what? I got a full-time job. And as I went along... Um, I realized that a lot of people in a, in a varied career, like an athletics director, where you have to know a little bit about a lot of things, sometimes there might be a tendency to spend more time on the front end trying to learn about a lot of different things. you got to be an expert in something first. So you get there, There's got to be something that you're an expert in so you can build credibility and trust and earn other opportunities. So I know I, I, I had the privilege of coming to a game, and I saw that on game there are a lot of moving parts, right? And all those moving parts start with you and end with you, right? You make the decisions. I'm there to help and <laughs> be in I, support. I like the way you, you I'm you there to be in support. support right. So so Ellie Shannon's in charge of our game day operation and our, our event manager operations uh, director. She's in charge of our game day operation. Who does she report to? She reports to Randy Cass Stevens, who reports to me. So Barry Faircloth's in charge of so our fan comes, experience. So it all comes back to that guy. Well, I think I have to set. I have to set an just like you. I mean, right. you, you you have to set an expectation and right. a level of um, uh, a level of professionalism True. and a level of integrity and and kind of set a standard. Uh, but really, it's about putting people and finding the right people to to, to to build to that standard. The best thing that ever happens to a person in a position like me is when somebody says, man, you guys did a great job at this or that. That was a great idea you guys came up with. And I sit there and say, I didn't even know we were doing that. I know the feeling. It's because our people, our people were empowered to come up with great solutions and implement them. Well, you got a great staff. Uh, I really appreciate you coming today. It means a lot for you to come and have shared with us uh, some of your experiences and, and some of the division for Wake Forest. Uh, I wish you much success. Uh, as an individual there. I'm sure you'll have it uh, from what I've seen and what I've met. Um, I hope the teams have great success. Uh, I'll be looking forward to the pin. I kind of like that. What you call it? Oh, no, 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 no I really, really, I really appreciate you. It's truly been a pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you again.